Well, Coach, I know you love to talk about defense, and your team's defense in that second half was, was pretty darn good. So congratulations on a hard-fought win. Thank you, Brian. You know, um, there's something about the whiteout that I think brings out the best in our opponent. And, uh, you know, I want to credit UNLV because I thought they had a great game plan. They had a number of individual players play at a very high level. And you could see from a talent perspective, uh, they don't take a back seat to many. And I think there's no doubt and maybe today's game will kind of move them forward because uh, I think they can have a very successful season, especially if they play the way they play tonight. They made us work on both ends of the floor. And our performance and the closeness of the game had a lot to do with how prepared they were, how hard they played, and some of the shots they made. They made timely big shots, sometimes that were very contested. Uh, I think the message for us is simple, that over the long course of a season, 37, 40 games, whatever we're going to play this year, you sometimes have to win when the ball doesn't go in the basket. And, you know, I don't know if we had uh, maybe ill-advised shots. I, I thought we probably missed seven two-inch shots. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not that they weren't contested, but these weren't jump hooks or post shots. These were, were layups, and uh, the ball just would not go in in the second half. But I think for us to fight hard when we talked at halftime a lot about if we truly are a great defensive team, then we should be able to turn this around because they shot 64% and had 16 field goals at the half. In the second half, they were 7 for 25, 0 for 8 from 3, and shot only four free throws and had six turnovers. So I thought our defensive effort in the second half overcame one of, to me, one of the poorest shooting nights we've had in a long time. And uh, the shots weren't necessarily coming from three. They were coming close to the basket. And, you know, Rhino and I were talking, sometimes that happens. You know, yep. every team during the course of a season, you're going to have a night when the, the ball's not falling. And how do you make up for it? Well, I think you explained it very well there. You buckle down on defense and you get into a game where a guy like T.J. McConnell was just, it seemed tremendous down the stretch. T.J. was tremendous, uh, and the reason was uh, his six field goals all came at crucial times for us. And the fact that he played 35 minutes, had six assists and only one turnover is spectacular. You know, six assists, one turnover doesn't really tell the story because some of the ones that I'm talking about missing, he was the person passing the ball. Uh, one great play late in the game that I thought might have been the biggest basket we made is he found Brandon coming down the lane and Brandon finished for him. And Brandon was the one guy, although maybe he missed one or two that he normally makes. When you look at his stat line, 13 points, 6 for 13 from the floor. If, uh, if he could stay out of foul trouble, you know, to me, he's knocking on the door, really breaking out. And I think that's the next step for him because it, it always seems like, you know, he he's, has to sit down or we're worried about him picking up his, his fourth or fifth foul. He played a significant portion down the home stretch with four fouls, and it was great to see him be able to finish the game. And also, and, and we've talked about him before, but uh, in Ronda you've got a tremendous sixth man to come off the bench. Uh, today a great example, 9.7 rebounds and six assists, and so active it seems, both ends. You know, I'm from Pennsylvania, and Rondé is too, and Rondé's from a community called Chester, and I really believe this. Every player that I've ever seen from Chester is just like them. Okay. There's just something about those guys. They're, they're hard-nosed. They play the game uh, physical, and it's almost like the bigger the stage and the brighter the lights, it brings out the best in Rondé, and you could see why he's won three state championships. We needed him today and he was able to do it. You know, in the second half, if you look at Aaron Gordon's eye, he took a pretty good shot. I was worried that maybe he was out there injured. And, uh, and because of that, you know, Rondé ends up playing 28 minutes, but uh, I thought his 28 minutes were very productive. You know, nine points, six assists, only one turnover, seven rebounds, including four offensive rebounds. Uh, he almost had a triple-double, if you think about it. So he was one of the keys to the game. We talked about Brandon and, you know, even Caleb. Caleb and Brandon, they combined for, for 12 for 22 from the floor, 25 points and 13 rebounds between both of them. Uh, those guys were a big, big reason we won as well. All right, Monday, Arizona should be atop the polls, AP and the coaches' poll. You have not shied away from talking about it. Some coaches don't want to talk about being number one. You relish the idea of your team being at the, the top of the poll. What will re your reaction be if, indeed, Arizona's number one in two days? 
Well, I, you know, we have to enjoy being number one. Uh, it's something that you, you can be on really good teams and coach and do it for a long time. And, and that it's really kind of an honor that you earn. It never comes your way. Uh, there's not a player, a coach, a manager, and even our fans that can't say that, that uh, they've watched or participated on or were a part of the number one team in the nation. Now, how long we have that, that's now up to us. But I feel like we've earned it. Uh, through our performance and it's something that I think is an honor. Uh, I'm happy for all the former players I'm ha happy for great fans. I mean if you're watching this game on TV today or you're in the building You can't have a better college basketball atmosphere than the one we had here in McHale today So for all people who love Arizona basketball to be number one I think we have to all take some time to enjoy it and then know that with that comes responsibility It's not like our season ends but uh, it's an honor that I think everybody would love to have. All right, congratulations to the win, Coach. We'll see you Wednesday. Thank you, Brian. Head Coach Sean Miller here, courtside at McHale Center. The Wildcats beat UNLV by a final score of 63-58.